So welcome everyone to Encompass Live. If you are unfamiliar with the show, Encompass Live is the Nebraska Library Commission's weekly webinar show, and we cover everything from pretty much anything library related. School libraries, public libraries, academic, um, prison, special, pretty much everything. So if it is library related, it will probably show up at some point on this show. And it starts every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. So if you're looking for something to watch, here we are. We also record the show. And yes, Cresta, I did press record. You're welcome. And you can, we do host those on YouTube. So you can watch this recording after the show. And I'm going to jump out of Krista's slides. This is what she usually plays right at the start. And I'm going to jump into my presentation for today. So traditionally, if you've gone to a pretty sweet tech show, you know that I usually set up a slide deck. But we're going to do something a little bit different today because it's easier to learn WordPress if you're actually in WordPress. So what I'm going to talk about today is how to actually pretty up your website. Um, you may have actually attended a previous Encompass Live where they talked about auditing your library's website. So if you actually want to find out how to plan out and how to assess your library website, I recommend going to that session because she did an amazing job and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So this session is going to talk about how to actually re like revamp your website layouts, how to just splash it up a little bit and then Another really, 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 really common question I get is how do I actually set up my library policies so that people can actually navigate them on the page and that it doesn't just look like, and people are actually able to download it and access it more easily. And then the third most common question I get is actually the calendars and events. So I'll do that one first and then I'll do the layouts for kids and teens and we'll do the designing graphics that work well throughout the entire process because it's just easier to show you as we go. So the first thing that I'm going to go through here and do is talk about the layouts. So I'm going to jump right into WordPress here. And I set up just a really simple training website. So I'm going to jump out and I'll go start fresh from the dashboard where you'd actually go right when you first log into WordPress. And if anyone has any questions about what's covered, you can put it into the question or to the chat section of um, GoToMeeting. I'm used to using Zoom, so I almost just said Zoom by default, but you know where you are. And so you can add your questions there or I'll put my email in at the end so you can also reach out and ask about it later. I will do my best to keep an eye on all of the different chat stuff, but I'm covering stuff. I'll just ask in between each different thing. So let me move all this over and so I can keep an eye on everything. And please ignore my luggage in the background, I'm packing for a trip. So I'm on the pages section here and I'm going to add a new page in here. And I'll show you two or three different ways that you can use an alternative layout instead of just list on a page. So I'm just going to copy and paste a really, a list that I've already got. And I'll do use a list block paste. So a lot of you have probably already got this on your website. I have this on my website, but people are getting sick of looking at lists. When people go to what they view as a boring website, they tend to click away. So 
if you haven't already used it, I use a tool called Elementor. Elementor is actually a plugin for WordPress that lets you build out fancier layouts. You can do a lot with the regular Gutenberg editor, but Elementor is actually a free plugin that you can download. It has, today I'll be using only the free features. So I'll click on this. Yes, I want to leave the page. So I'll click on this and then if you don't already have it, you can go to the plugin sections of WordPress, um, search for Elementor, download the free version. And if you really, really, really want the fancy stuff, they also have a pro version. So if you want more control over your, like the gallery settings, or if you want more control over being able to add in pages and posts in different custom places, then this is the way to go. So by default, Elementor will open up to this main section where it gives you all the different block types on this left-hand side. And this is, if you already had anything typed into your page or entered onto your page, it's going to convert it into Elementor-friendly blocks. So this is your heading. This is like the title that'll show up on the top of the page. And this is your actual list. So I'm going to add in a new section down here and I'm going to use this three column layout because what we're going to do is add in three different image cards on here that has the description underneath. So when you click on this page and this little plus sign here, you'll go over onto this left hand side and you're looking for something called image box. So we'll grab this, we'll just click and drag this over into this little box. And then you want to grab the most common things that people use this for is to do to showcase upcoming events and featured materials and featured resources. So 101 class and then you can enter in a brief description. And the date. I'll actually choose somewhere in February so it doesn't seem like it's already passed. 24. And so one thing in Elementor and in WordPress in general is that by default, even if you do um, have a line break in like right after this, like you're trying to get this 2 slash 4 slash 2024 to go onto a new line, it won't actually do it if you just use this regular trying to put a line break in here. They actually make you use something called H, this HTML tag. So if you just do this B, like the BR and then the slash and the, your brackets, it'll push it onto a new line. And if you want an extra space, you can do two of those. But that's just a little trick of the trade. So if you've been super frustrated by why that won't work, if you're using Gutenberg or if you're using Elementor, that's why. It's because it's just looking for that. And if you don't have, if you have no idea what that BR is and you don't remember it after this show, you can also just add in a separate text underneath it. So you can add a new text editor right down below and you can add it in here. So that way, if you forgot that little trick or if it's not showing up right for you, you can still do it. And then you can center it by going into style and center. So that way everything lines up the way that you want it to. 
And the other thing that you want to do with this little icon thing is that you actually might want to make it look cool. Even if you don't have a picture of a business class going on at your library, you can also go to a website called Pixabay. And this is a this is the place where I get a lot of my images for websites and for the use on the web. And I'm just going to grab, I'm gonna search business. I'm a librarian, what do I know? So I'm going to grab this cool looking image. Actually, that's kind of a trick question because I've been researching and learning a lot about businesses. So I actually know quite a bit, so whatever. But I'm just gonna download this. And I'm going to download it at the highest resolution possible. The reason that I didn't go to this highest, highest one is because usually when you try to download the highest resolution, it'll ask you to log in. And I can't guarantee I remember my password right now, so I'm gonna play it safe. So I downloaded this. Now I'm going to go to upload file. I'll go to select file, grab this image that I just uploaded, and waiting, waiting, waiting. I'll click on this insert media. And now you'll see that it shows up as this tiny, 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 tiny little thumbnail. We're gonna change this image size to large. And full. So now if that doesn't do the trick, you want to go into style, go to width, and drag this all the way to 100. And now this is how you actually get that to fill that entire screen. And now you might want to actually change the distance here. So we're going to go to spacing up here and shift that down. And you can also go into this column section and say edit column. And you can even add any background colors and styling. So if you wanna be able to change the blocking on each one of these different columns, you'll go into style, background type, and then you'll click on this little color that has a little slash through it. Now I'm just gonna choose a really neutral color just to show what this looks like. And then you can block that, that content off. You can fiddle with whatever color you want on here. It's your website. And then you can do the exact same thing over here. But usually what I do on here is I go to duplicate and that way I don't have to actually do this entire mess again and I'm going to drag this up here so now I don't have to change my settings I don't have to do anything and I just have to change the background color of this column here so I aim for this little I hover over this column wait for this little column thing to show up here go into the style section on the left hand side, go to the background type, go to classic, hit the little slash thing over here. And now I'm just gonna choose a cool teal color because why not? And now you'll see that depending on the color that you chose, sometimes you'll also need to change the color of this title because that's not going to pass a readability test by any stretch of the imagination. So I click back into this section here, go back into style, and go into content. And then I can change the color of this title by clicking on the, the title color. And I'm just going to go a hair above black. And then I'll change the color of the paragraph so that's easier to read and I'll also make it matching here so I'll copy this highlight copy click back into this original one go into the content setting under the style section 
and then I'll click on the color for the description and paste the exact same. This is a hex color code. So this is a number code that indicates the color on a website, just basically. And then I'll change this. We want this to be the, the exact same thing as this heading color. And honestly, with a nearly black, you could probably almost eyeball it, but I have like OCD styling. So I'm going to copy. And so I copied the hex color from this title. I go over to this title just by clicking on it. And then I grab this title color and paste in the same title color over here. And you can also add a handy dandy little button. So I'm going to click. I don't know why Elementor set it up in this way, but um, they made it kind of random to be able to add these secondary little columns. So you actually have to click on the plus sign of a column you have not yet filled. And then the button availability will actually show up. And then you can grab a button and click and drag it over. And you want to drag it over toward, come on. You're aiming for, what I'm looking for is this little rectangle to show up. When the rectangle shows up and this little um, circle cross thing that says that I can't put it there, when that disappears, and this rectangle shows up, I can plunk my button down. If you try to just grab a button and plunk it where that where you want it to go, but where that little slash thing is not is still showing up, it's not going to appear. So you just want to make wait for that, and then you can click on your new button and then change the settings on the left hand side here. So where it says click here, you can say register. And then you can send it, you can copy and paste a link to a Google form or wherever your forms are showing up into this link section. And so I'll just grab a random Google form. Here, we'll just send people over to the tech kit request form. I'll delete it anyway. No one's ever going to click on this. They don't even know it exists. So I will get a pre-filled link. Now it's copied. Now I'll go back into my Elementor page and it did not copy. So I'm going to send grab a link, shorten the URL just because I can, hit copy. That time it copied to clipboard. I'll go back into Elementor and now control V paste. Link options, I'm going to open it in a new window and then I'll close the little options by clicking on the gear. Now I want my button to be centered in my area so I'll hit the center here. I don't love this color because it doesn't not match. It's just not what I'm going for. So I want to change this green. So I'm going to go into style, go into color, and let's just make it like a darkish gray. There. I could also OCD it and I could grab the same color from the text, but Eh, it's a button. It's a test. You can do it if you want to. And we'll also change this Business 101 class to a um, knitting club. And then we'll change this picture. We'll go back into content, go to choose image. And now I'm going to grab a Knitting, a knitting picture. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to get as close as I can to the pixels that I chose here. 
if I really wanted to, I could actually go into Canva and I could make sure that all my image tiles were the same size. And you'll see why I do that in a second. So let's just grab a random knitting. Oh, this one's cute. Download. It's not exactly the same size, but whatever. So now I'm going to go back into Elementor and I will upload the file that I just downloaded. Click on select file, grab my little knit bears, open. And go to insert media. So now the it's not as noticeable as you'll find in some of the other images that you might choose. But if you have um, web styling OCD like I do, you might want all of these to actually match and line up all the way across. And if you scooch in here, they don't. This is actually a taller picture than this one is. So it's just something that catches people's eye when they see it and when they're trying to find out what you've got going on. And the average user might not notice it, but but I know it's there. It just looks more pleasing if it it all matches. So I'm going to copy this one more time. And I will copy and paste. Now that grabbed the entire thing, so I'm just going to delete this column. And so I'll right click and delete. So now that's another way that you can make it so that if you want the same coloring, you can just keep it as is. Um, this looks like a homogenous block, so I'm just going to edit this column and I'll grab I'll click on this little edit, go back into style. I'll grab a new random color. Let's do purple. So if you are looking for a cool trick to actually get colors that match, you can also go to a website called coolers.co. So if you are terrible at matching colors like I am, you go to this website, click on Start the Generator, and then you'll click on the space bar. I actually kind of like this green. I, my favorite animal is a frog, and my first frog was like a bright green. I like green. So you'll, I locked in this color, and then I'm going to hit the space bar until I find more colors that I like. And just for sake of having different colors, I'll lock in pink. And then I will lock in blue. So if you do have um, library branded colors, you can also type in your code here. So you can type in the specific um, color code and then you can lock that one in and match based on that. So, and you can also, if you have your own color code, you probably might not even need this site, but sometimes you will need other colors on your website that are complementary to the colors that are on your brand, but aren't exactly. Like you might want different shade differentiation and you can also grab that from here. So say that this is a library branded blue you can also go into view shades and you can grab hex colors that are lighter or darker. So fun fact. And the way that you'd use this is to just, there's a copy hex button that's just like short coded into here. So you copy the hex and then you can go back into Elementor. We'll go back into this column section and I'll go back to my color and I can paste in that hex that actually worked. It's really super similar to the one that I already chose. This is probably a poor example, but you get the gist of it. I can do it better with this. I'll change purple to pink so you have a better feeling of how that actually changed. 
so you probably already got it. Then I'll just click on that little column thing up here, go into the color, and we're pink. So now the other thing that you might want to do is, this is assuming that you just had like a list of events that are coming up. I'm not going to go through the entire process of changing this title and changing the description and changing the picture because you know how to do that now. And you already know how to pretty much duplicate that layout. So if you have multiple images, you can. there's this little section up here when you hover over it that will say edit section. You can also right click on that and duplicate it. So this will duplicate your entire block. And so you don't have to do this over and over and over again if you have entire rows and rows of stuff that you want to add in. You just duplicate it. And if you want to have some sort of, if you don't like it that these are all smushed together, you can also click on this edit sec, this edit content, this edit section area, and you can put in um, spacing. So you can also do style and oh, it's in advanced. Never mind. So we're going to go to padding, but we're going to in, we're going to unlink these. We'll go to padding on top, and then you can give that a little bit more breathing room. And you can slide it. I don't care how much padding you give it. Usually I do about between 20 and 30, so we'll go to 25. And you can also change it so that this we'll click on this edit section. It's defaulted to, to, to going to boxed. You can also go to full width and it will take up more space on the page. And we'll go down to this one, go to edit section, go to layout and full width. So now this is taking up the full width of the section that you allowed it. And you can also remove this sidebar. So if you want this to fill up the entire width of the screen, like it looks on a lot of social media platforms, then you can also go into this settings button in the lower left-hand corner. And we're gonna wait for that to load. This page layout, instead of default, will go to Elementor full width. Give it a second to load, take effect. And while it does that, I will sip my coffee. And now it stretches across the entire screen. And that's up to you. Depends on what you're doing. You can do whatever you want with it. So just adding a image, and adding a description makes it look cooler than just a list on a page. And you can just grab the picture from Pixabay or whatever you've got stored locally. And it just, it looks way cooler. Maybe it's a me thing. So that is one option for it. But if you don't like this kind of card style layout, um, you can also add spacing in between these different blocks by clicking on this column and then we'll go into advanced here and now we'll we're going to keep this padding linked and you're going to add in oh this is just going to the picture i misclicked which sometimes happens in here so you want this edit column I accidentally hit the picture and I was aiming for this little button in the corner that says edit column. So now try that again. Confounded. Okay, there's another way we can do it. We'll go to edit section and we'll go to advanced and we'll hit padding here. So that'll pad the entire section. And you'll see that it also pads the picture in here. We'll click back on here, go into advanced, 
and click here, advanced. Oh, this is one of those things where I just used about four different software systems and I have to remember the right setting that's in this software that is not the other one. So what I'm aiming to do is actually just adding on each, add padding on each one of these different little columns. And the setting that usually does it in another program does not do it here. And until I find out why that is, it will not lead you astray. So I'm going to change the padding back here and change the padding back here. That doesn't make any sense. It was already on zero, but whatever. So let me go into edit. See the edit image box, it usually only edits just this picture here. And the edit column box is supposed to edit everything that's contained within this column. So usually I can just click on that edit column, go into the advanced and add padding that goes around the entire thing. There, now it did it. What I was looking for is for it to add the space around the entire block instead of just the image. But it, there are times the charm. So just make sure that you add, you aim for this little column thing and you can add in padding. I have no idea why I chose 17. It, I did it on the first one and I was too lazy to go back and change them all. Usually I do between 15 and 20, but 17, I'll take it. And so that's your option there. And then we'll go down here and I'm going to add a new column in here and I'll show you another way that you can do list style stuff without using that card layout. So we'll go into columns. I'm going to choose four columns this time. I'll go into, now we've got our plus sign here. I'll click on this first plus, and now I am looking for icon box here. So I'll click and drag the icon box. This time I don't even want this. Let's say that you're doing a library services page and you want people to know that you have um, computers, then you have, we're going to duplicate. I'll grab this over here. Then you want them to know that you've got a um, color printer. And then I'll duplicate. You can also copy paste. There's always more than one way to do it. And then I'll change this to say, uh, da, 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 da. Blazer cutter. And then I'll do one more row just to kind of give the full feel of it. Here, I'll copy paste it just for you. And now I want to change this little icon on top here. So that, and I usually just grab a default one that's already loaded in here. So there's already an icon library that's in here that you can grab pretty much anything that already exists. So I usually by default start by searching out what I'm actually want. So I try computer or whatever, but it looks like that is not immediately available. So we're gonna grab the next closest thing. I'll use this little file thing. And I'll grab, I'll click on this next one, go into icon library. And normally I would tell you that you can just upload what you want into this icon, 
but there's I also chose this setting to show you a weird, weird security thing that's in WordPress. And it's because it gives you the option to upload an icon, but it will ask you to upload an SVG icon. And an SVG has a different upload protocol to go into WordPress. If you upload um, an SVG, you have to change a security setting on the back end of WordPress that lets you upload different kinds of files. And SVG has kind of like a known security risk for people being able to get hacked more easily. So that's why I say that you can upload your own if you have an SVG, but do so warily and make sure you have a good IT department because I don't know how many people know that about WordPress, but it's a thing. My brother is a software engineer, so he told me about it. But so I usually just, if you're short on time using this icon library, people mostly just look at the captions of it to see what it is and they wanna know that, they just wanna know what you've got. So I'll show you this icon area to do it. I'm gonna grab just this little, we are going on printers. So we'll grab this print and then a laser cutter. We're probably not gonna find a tiny little laser cutter, but this is the demonstration. So I'm just gonna grab whatever looks cool like this little leaf insert and keep this as a star click here and go to um then we'll do 3d printer but again, you can use whatever you want. You can also do the exact same thing that we did with these up here and change the color settings. And you can also change the size of it. So if you want to make this bigger, you can make it massive. And I usually just kind of default it to around, around 100, but it really depends on what you're doing. You can do whatever you want. And then we'll go into content and then go into the color of, you can change this to that dark gray. You can change it to pretty much whatever you want. And you can go into this coolers and grab a cool color that you really like. And then you can also change the typography. So that's defaulted to Roboto, but you can change it to pretty much anything you want on here. And one thing that I will note about this is that sometimes even though this font is available on your own computer and in this setting, it may not always appear that the way that you want it to on your, page, on your library customer's computer because the font that's available to show up is also determined by the browser that they're using and the type of computer that they're on. So you might choose this cool, cool, fancy font, but on the back end of this, um, it might just, what the computer has to do is actually list out a whole bunch of different fonts that say, first use rock salt. If the computer doesn't have rock salt available, then go to Ropa Sands. If Ropa Sands and rock salt aren't available, then go to blah, blah, blah. So you might actually just wind up with Arial font no matter what you do, but this is just a cool way to, most computers, most modern computers will probably be able to display the font that you want, but most of our patrons, I won't say most, a lot of our patrons might not have a modern computer. They might not have the most updated cool new tech. So you might think that you're choosing this cool fancy font, some people aren't ever going to see it. So I usually just say use the either use the default or use one of the more common fonts that are available, even if you just Google common fonts. And so then we'll click on here and we can change the color of 
you can change anything. We'll go back into content and you can also change the size of your little uh, caption. And I'm waiting for my computer to load here. So we'll go back into style and then we'll go into content and then we'll go into typography and then we'll go into size. So that is what makes it bigger. And I don't want it too massive. We're just gonna go to about 30. And you're welcome to just test around and play with these different settings, but I'm lazy. I usually just do default when I can. Now I'm just fiddling with it. All right, so now we'll click back on here and go back into, scroll back up to the top, go to the icon section. And this is actually, I'm used to it now, like it's second nature to me now. But one thing that it took some getting used to was that they separate the settings for icon versus content. So it took me a second to actually realize that you could change the colors of the content too, and you could change the colors of the icon because by default it opened up this and it took me a second to notice this, but you can totally do it. So just make sure you click through both of them and play around with what you got. So I'm gonna change this color content to computers. You can make a different color for each different one of them. You can make them all the same color, I don't care. And now I'm going to copy and paste this. And delete that. So usually when you get your setting done on one of them and you have one of them looking the way that you want, you just copy and paste the whole mess. Um, for whatever reason, I decided to put all the icons up before I had actually made them look the size and shape that I wanted, but learn from my mistakes. Wait until you're done. So now I'll delete this, delete this, copy, paste, paste. Then you can go through, change your icons, change what they say, and duplicate them. So now I just went to that little, I hovered over this edit section, right click and duplicated. And you can have as many of these in a row as you want. And you can also add in a heading. So I'll hit this little plus sign here that says add section. I will add this section here, go to a full width section so that it fills up the entire column. I'll click on that plus sign that's in that new section, drag over a heading, and we'll see that it says computer lab and maker space. Now I wanna make this big, so I'm gonna take this here, I will center it, and then I'll make it a larger font. Then I'll go to this style, and I'm going to change the text color to a white-ish because we're going to add a background. Then I'll go into this advanced. We'll go into background. And now I'm going to go into this little classic for the background type. And we're going to add a background color by clicking on this little square with a slash through it. Now, I've been on a blue or an, on an aqua kick, so we're just gonna do that. And I'm just gonna grab a little, there. So now you'll see that this is smushed in real close to the actual text. So we wanna go back into this advanced, and we're going to go up into layout, and now we're going to add some padding. So now this is going to look at more like a blocked off section. 
So I'm just going to grab 30 just because I can. And now the other thing is that you might want this to line up to the other blocks on here because this looks a little bit random with it being smushed off into the middle. So we'll go back into this edit section and we're going to change it from the default that is boxed over to full width. And now it's not going to be perfectly full width because we added that padding onto it. If you did want it to be perfectly lined up and you have your own kind of styling OCD, like I have my styling OCD, you can go into this, click on this section here, and you can go unlink the values, and you can shift this down to zero. You can also type in it double zero, zero, tab, tab, zero. And now that will actually get it closer to the edge. And you can also, oh, I have led you astray. I'm going to shift this back into 30 because I went into the wrong setting. So I'll show you what I did wrong here, just because it's one of the easiest things that people can do wrong. And it's because this padding here is actually what makes the empty space on the outside of this, uh, of this text. So when I changed that 30, all it did was change this little block around here. What I wanted to do was change that empty space that's on the outside here, and that's in a different setting. So you click inside the box and the advanced and the padding has the 30s on the inside. We wanna click on this little edit section here, go into the advanced, and now our padding is defaulted. So we want to unlink this, and now we want to go to this right, and we're doing a negative padding. There must be an override on here. So in the back end of the computer, whenever you do styling choices, the computer has to say, pay attention to the settings that are in this section first, if it doesn't conflict with the settings in this section, then follow the settings in this section next. So there's like a the little background thing in the computer says that we can't do this. So an easier way to do this is to go into the edit section here and then go into the advanced and add padding around this entire section so that it lines up. And the reason that that isn't doing that is because we're going to set this down to zero, link all these values together so that it affects everything on the other side. I forgot that I had, that I had unlinked it before. Now we can change it to match. So it's actually easier to get this section to match this one than it is to get that section to match this one. So cool. Now, because I'm used to Krista like running the show in the background, I haven't actually gone in to check to see if there are any questions. And I did do see a question that says, can you show how to edit the image so they line up? I'm assuming that you mean the, like the image that's over the business 101 class, the knitting club, and then whatever in the world this is going to be. So yes, I can. So what I'm going to do is go into Canva and I will grab a just a random template. And normally what I do is I just choose a common pixel size. So I'm going to grab
So the most common setting for a I'll show you how I usually do this. I grab a calculator and I know I check the setting width of the actual layout that I'm using. Usually it's going to be about 1280 pixels wide. And then I divide that by three sections. Three is the number of columns that I want to be going across. So I know that if I wanted no, absolutely no space in between each different image, each, each image would need to be about 426 pixels wide. And, but I want there to be a little bit of space on the sides. So about 400 is fine. If you're OCD style, you can do it that way and you'll have absolute control over the size of your picture. But the way that I usually do it when I'm just lazy or the way that most people do it is to just grab a picture that is larger and make sure that all of your pictures are the right size and then WordPress will automatically shrink them down. So you just wanna make sure that you're choosing the same size pictures and Pixabay does not do a great job of having the same exact size pictures. So I'm going to go into, the reason that I did the search for the pixel is that I wanted to set a default canvas size in Canva, and I wanted to make sure that I chose a random pixel that was bigger than what I actually needed. So I'm going to go into create a design and a custom size. And I'm going to randomly choose 600 for a width. And then I will use 300 for a height. So now I have a standardized template. Now I'm going to go into the apps in Canva. And Canva actually has an integration with Pixabay. So I'm going to search for Pixabay in Canva, and then I'll open the Pixabay app inside Canva, and then I'm going to search for business. And usually I can find like a similar or the exact same image that as the one that I found in the regular website of Pixabay. If you can't, don't worry about it. I, this is, in this case, we were actually able to find it. So now I just click and drag that over. And now I'm going to duplicate this page. And now I'm going to grab knitting. And this is a cool one. Well, we'll grab the bears we used before. So now I'll drag this over there. This is close enough. If you really want, you can fiddle around with where this is cropped off, but we're not gonna worry about that. And now let's say that we want our last image to be um, story hour. So we have kids reading. There. So let's say that these are the three images that we want to use in our, um, on our website. Um, on Canva, if you don't already know, you can also upload your own images and then drag them over here. Our main thing is that we're just cropping these images so that they're all the same size. So now I'm going to go into the share button and I'm going to hit download. And then the fun thing about Canva is that if you have the paid version, you can also drag this to a higher pixel size. And this is just like kind of a safety marker so that if you are only considering that you want a three column layout, but you're not sure, you can make this extra big. And if you make it extra big and you decide to use a two column layout later, when this when WordPress automatically stretches your image to a bigger size, it won't look grainy and pixelated because you already chose a higher quality, higher size image at the start. But the thing that you, if you choose to do this, make sure that you magnify every one of the images that you download to the exact same size. And that way you won't have to worry about things stretching out weird. 
So I'm going to make a note that we're using a 1.5 scaling. And now I'm going to grab image one, done, download. You can also bulk download them, but it zips the files and then you just have to unzip them. So share, download, 1.5, page two, done, download. Do the same thing again, share, download, pages, page three. If you have a million of them, feel free to, to just download them all and unzip them later. Download there. And now we go back into Elementor. We're going to delete, delete, control Z, because that didn't do what I wanted it to do. We're going to click back on this image, click on upload files, click select file. I'm going to grab this newly updated. I don't feel like uploading these all individually, so I'm just going to upload them all in one. So then I'll grab, waiting for this to load. I'm waiting for this bottom right-hand corner insert media to show up. So then we have this. Now I'm going to grab our new bears. And now it's just in media library because I had already done it. And then I'll click on this last one, which is going to be our children's story hour. Grab our Harry Potters. And now they all line up. And because we grabbed that um because we made the images bigger if we decide that we don't want to use this knitting club one in the middle we can also delete this delete the entire column and now it'll stretch out so now we don't have to worry about accidentally starting with a smaller image and then when it stretches it looks weird so that's why we do that Hopefully that helped. And we're gonna, I'm gonna close some of these different tabs because we don't really need them anymore. And I'm also noticing that we're creeping up on 1059, but I'm going to go back into our list here. So we covered the layouts that look different than a simple list. We covered the graphics. And in a weird way, we actually covered the some one of the event page layouts because one of the most common event page layouts is to actually just make it look like this and have a, reg, a direct registration button. And the other way that you can do it is to just set up a calendar. And the main thing that I wanted to go over in this webinar was the recommended calendar type. So I'm going to publish this just for example. And I'm going to wait for this little spinning circle to go. Then I'll go into this upper left and go into exit so we can get back into our main WordPress dashboard. Um, the other main question that I get both from Nebraska libraries and from libraries that are using WordPress outside Nebraska that are trying to figure this stuff out is which events plugin should I actually use to make things look the way the way that I want it to and we actually use events manager so events manager has this icon that looks like a little shield and there's also about there are a lot of different plugins that have very similar sounding names so you just want to make sure that you're grabbing event manager and not event managers and the reason that I use this is because it has a freemium version that has all the different features that I'm looking for. So it allows you to add a single one-time event and it allows you to add recurring events. So if you have a story hour that happens the second 
Tuesday of every month, then you can just fill out a form that says this happens the second Tuesday of every month and it'll automatically put it into your calendar. With a lot of the other calendars on the market, they put the recurring events either in the paid or they just don't have that option. So that's why I use it. And then the other thing is how to set up the layouts for the kids and teens. And we also sort of covered that just because most kids and teens want something that just looks like Twitter or looks like a social media feed. So you can also use that same column layout to be able to do that. And your other option is that I showed how to do the columns that are straight across in a row, but you can also use that same column layout to make offset tiles. So we're unfortunately we are out of time a little bit for that right now, but if you want, you can also email me. I did promise that I would give you the email address. I'm used to having a slide deck that actually has it right there. So what I'm going to do is put it in here. Why did I hit enter? I didn't mean to hit enter. Here, I have another way to do it. I will grab a different slide deck and just go to the slide that I want. There you go. So I'll give you a second to jot that down. If you do have any other pressing questions, you can enter them into the chat. I'll stick around for a little bit to answer anything you got. If it's something that's going to take a little bit longer or needs a longer demonstration, um, for Nebraska libraries, I do a, you can sign up for a time that you can do a WordPress orientation, or you can just sign up for a time that you want to learn one specific feature or like a few specific things. So if you say, can you show me that offset layout, we'll set up kind of a time to get to hop over Zoom or on the phone and I'll walk you through how to do it. If you are looking for different ways to do the policies because we didn't get to that today, um, I can show you how to do that and you have options. And if you are a library outside of Nebraska, I'm just already answering the questions. Feel free to email me and I'll still answer it. And if you are looking for future Encompass Live shows, you can go to, you can just Google Encompass Live. As Krista always says, right now, we're the only one that uses the Encompass Live. So don't use it. Don't you dare take it. But right now, if you Google it, you'll find this list. It'll take you to the web page and the upcoming shows. So we have got Wi-Fi in the library coming up next, and then we have Connected Nebraska, Bridging the Digital Divide Through Innovative Editor Room Expansion. I can't believe I actually said that all right. And then we've got a few more shows coming up, and we have another pretty sweet tech, which is the monthly show that I do the last Wednesday of the month. So if you're looking for techie goodness of some flavor, this t today was WordPress. I've also done stuff for like augmented reality, AI, and I do stuff. So feel free to register for any of those shows. You can also follow it on Facebook. And I think that I'll just say Facebook. I'm 99% certain it's on Twitter too, but I know it's on Facebook. So hopefully we see you at a future show and I am going to stop the recording now.